So this is to thank you for all of your work. Um, I think that everyone here knows in some way uh, how important community is when it comes to the arts, to be there for one another, and that it takes catalysts for that. And that is why we have uh, all of these features <laughs> <laughs> and Tim uh, today here and to say thank you for all you are doing uh, to make the arts uh, reverberate and connect with other people and, and bring meaning really to life and, and hope and, and lots of other powerful things I believe in. And I, I really, and reading more about you and reading your words and hearing you today, I thank you all so much. And, and Tim and Abstensia, where he, maybe he's in the restroom. But uh, I, will, I will begin over here. Uh, I, I just have a few words, if, if you please, because it is the April month, you know. Okay, remembering Stanley Kunitz and the important work that you're all doing here. I have from Marie Howe. At a poetry festival, someone once asked Stanley about his relationship to nature. I am nature, he retorted, not unkindly, and he knew because he was nature that he would die. He lived with that awareness and wrote about it. To be human, he used to say, was to know yourself to be living and dying at the same time. But it always seemed to me that he lived at the intersection of time and eternity, and that he lived in time so comfortably. Anyone who's ever been shopping with Stanley remembers how he would pick up a lemon and look at it intently. One would walk three times around the grocery store before Stanley had looked at several lemons long enough to choose one and move on to the lettuce. He didn't hurry. He'd tie up the little bundle of herbs in brown paper and string. Wait right here, he'd say, disappearing into the kitchen. I have just the thing, and he never did two things at once. On a train to Albany a few years ago, our last journey together, I asked him how he did it. How did he live in the present when I and everyone I knew was always harried, hurried, late, and unsettled? You must grab a hold of time, he said, and draw it into yourself. You must train it so that it corresponds to your own interior rhythms. Otherwise, he said, you'll be chasing it all your life. A few minutes later, we lurched to the dining car, bought some food, sat at one of the tables. The world was rushing past the wide windows, backyards and satellite dishes, junked cars, highways, factories, hospitals. Stanley opened our little snacks, pulling carefully at the cellophane, and then set them between us. Here's our feast, he declared, and we ate our crackers and rubbery cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Marie Howe on Stanley Kunitz, and just to uh, illuminate uh, the poet uh, and person he was and what you were doing and sharing that out with the community and we look forward to news of tours and all other events and there are some flyers at the table so thank you for all you are doing one more hand thank you. do you know where Tim is uh, no I don't no okay all right um, well then we'll go with Scott next I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I am glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So, Marilyn Ray Beyer uh, sent a little quote for you and said that Scott Alaric has always been an enthusiastic champion of folk music on the radio, especially in drawing the direct lines connecting radio, coffee houses, and clubs and the vibrancy of a music scene. I might add that his writings helped tremendously in getting public to connect those dots. And in our audience today, Ellen Schmidt also wrote for some words on you and said, Scott's been a supporter of folk music through his interpretation of folk songs and his own original compositions. He has a deep understanding of the folk community and the roots of the music, the evolution of folk music over the centuries. As a folk music writer for the Globe, he supported many events and performers and called attention to many new and upcoming artists. He has also been a presenter of many events in which he performed, but also included other artists. He is a fine writer. His earlier book, Deep Community, and his novel, Revival, have been very well received. And that was some words of thanks from Ellen Schmidt. That uh, means all the more coming from Ellen, because yeah. if, if mm -hmm. yeah. you, you couldn't go wrong putting her picture next to the word activist in the dictionary, <laughs> mm -hmm. or maybe perhaps next to the phrase love of music. Yeah, that's true. Yes. Thank you, Ellen, also. And um, Tim, I have some words from our community also, uh, from Deb Elstrom today. And 
I did. If you can linger for a moment. <laughs> I wasn't going to say, but. <laughs> I thought we were doing the break. Uh, oh, but this is all good. This is all good now. <laughs> Tim has been active in supporting music and poetry in central Massachusetts from at least the early 90s when I came to know the local scene and probably quite a bit before that. He was active in supporting slam poetry when it first blossomed here, and perhaps the first venue opened to the then new art of performance poetry after slam came to Boston. So many of the early performance poetry community started their own readings here, influenced by what they heard at Tim's readings. For many years, he booked and managed entertainment for the venerable Old Vienna Coffee House in Westboro. Have we said that name enough times today? <laughs> Where through the open mics, local poets and performers could try out their material. Oh, and the performers, Tim brought in to the old Vienna and then to Passim's and now Hezekiah Stone's Coffee House in Lester. Lester. Yes, so many good nights of music and poetry. We've been blessed to have him with us. And then I have a combo comment for both of you. Thanks, <laughs> yes, that's Deb in the back there. Thank you. Um, and the person who uh, I pounded a rock, and he said there are sticks out there in the community, as you were saying, uh, was Don White for myself and how he connected. I was writing by myself and really not in a good community experience, and he connected me to others and the activists some mentioned here. Um, he has a quote for the two of you. And he wrote, the fact that I can make a living as a folk singer can be traced back directly to Tim Mason and Scott Alaric. They both believed in me in the days when believing in me was lonely enterprise indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Mason brought me from an open micer to selling out the old Vienna coffee house in the span of one year by letting me open regularly for many of the legendary artists that pass through that beloved venue. He has done and continues to do the same for countless poets, songwriters, and musicians for nearly three decades. Wow. Scott Alaric and I were the only two folk singers to work regularly at the Catch a Rising Star Comedy Club in Harvard Square in the early 90s. I can show you the scars. <laughs> <laughs> it is not an exaggeration to say that through his career as a folk music writer, he has helped bring awareness to the work of more musicians than anyone I know, and he always does so with kindness and respect. These are two extraordinary human beings that I am proud to count among my close friends. Don White. I have a little thank you. It's uh, Hopkinton connected. It's from our, our sculptor in town, Michael Alfano, who makes sculptures that go out through the world often about uh, caring for others, compassion, um, and good causes. And he has a little sculpture for each of you with a questioning mind, with a quote from Einstein. Mm -hmm. The important thing is to not stop questioning. Curiosity has its own reason for existing. Mm -hmm. And it's a little uh, question mark of mine. So well, from you. Michael Alfano, who could not be thank here you. today, but has sent these along. And I thought you two could share, because you're probably in the same house. Right? The same house. <laughs> <laughs> and so there you go. Thank you very much. Your home. And one more hand, please, for all our It's called Way of Life. I used to think an artist meant a painter, an eccentric, hot tempered, odd kind of offbeat individual who dabs colors on canvas and drip colors down everywhere. I used to think being an artist meant poor, suffering emotional, financial hardship, outcast, left by others. I used to think that art is for spare time, or when I get old, just like me now, free from all obligations and financially secure. I wasn't strong and brave enough to be an artist. I was waiting for the right and perfect time, until suddenly one day I was too weak to walk, even lost my heart desire to doodle. My, the doodling was my best friend when I am bored and stuck. And now things change, so I now embrace every moment. I believe whatever I do, uh, anyhow. You can see all those wiggling thoughts anyhow. I believe now simply uh, breathing is an art. There's no right time.
and no perfect time. Time is now. Whatever I do, invisible, visible, thinking, cooking, gardening, washing, humming, all my, my activities, my art. And I also believe that because of all the drug, uh, prescription drug that people gave me to help me stay in safe corners, I wasn't able to walk. It was almost like turning all the light up. Now I believe art is actually my therapy and my medicine, and it is my reason being to learning, most of learning myself. Thank you. Getting ready for poetry. Friends are coming over to share their work, words that can move and sway if the heart is open. I am scouring the laptop for my own work, folders by year, back and back in time. I come across an old file from 1996, not recognizing the name, I open it. Divorce Settlement, 1996. How it brought me back to those times, the ex-wife never committed, never meant till death do us part. When I left, she didn't ask me to stay. I waited so long, and now I know it is third time lucky, with this wife anyway. She retorts, you die on me, I'll kill you. <laughs> it's good to have a mate for life, lets you be real, honest. No divorce settlements, 2020. I better get those poems ready. One of the things that I've always felt sad about is that a lot of young people, and especially uh, females, grow up in very difficult circumstances where they get scarred and, and damaged by their family upbringing. And this is called Sins of Your Father. I am tired. It is time for sleep. Sight has been subjugated by feel as I slip off my shoes, toes and heels working as fingers. I feel sad that we have not spoken much these past few days and I am hungry for your voice. My hand touches the buckle of my belt to continue undressing and I think of your father who, long dead, still keeps us at arm's length, not literally, for we share each other with passion. But deep within, within you, his shadow lives, the spectre of the raised arm never too far away. You need time to write, you tell me, but there are always other things that keep you busy, distracted, safe, under control. I might as well be that man who raised his voice and scarred you, for I can never reach and touch your soul. It is too well protected after long years of the lash. My only crime, the wrong gender, and guilty without a trial. You may keep me at a distance, but as long as I draw breath, I will strive to get closer, even if it is one inch at a time for the glimpses of your soul are a potent elixir to me, and I will not give up just yet. Thank you. serious and sad You say that life can't be that rough You say, honey, it ain't that bad So I thought I'd write a tune With your request in mind It's the silliest, sunniest, happiest, funniest tune That I could find So Your damn happy song. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. La 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 la. Well, I hope you like your happy song. Well, folk music gets a bad rap. 
It can be misunderstood Just because it sounds depressing Doesn't mean it isn't good So here it is per your request And just to prove you wrong Not only is it funny But you can say La 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 Here's your damn happy song A little change up Skilly da do da do da day Here's your damn happy song La 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 Well I hope you like your happy song Very good Well it's true that we folk singers Like to pen our tale of woe but just to prove I'm in your groove, I've done it. Here you go, here you go, everybody. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. Don't forget to find on that part. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. Skilly da do da do da day. Your damn happy song. La 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 la. Well, I hope you like your happy song. One more time. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy song. Skilly da do da do da day. Here's your damn happy song. La 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 la. Here's your damn happy, here's your damn happy. Great harmonies. Hope you like your happy song. Skilly da do da day. Thanks so much. When I was six years old, my father went off to World War II to be a surgeon in, I guess it was something like a mass unit, only perhaps not as fun. Uh, and my mother moved herself, me, and my little brother out to Bronxville, New York, from New York City. Bronxville was a very walkable city back in the days where you let your kids go off on their own. This one's called Dumbo. Dumbo, small and befuddled, giant ears tucked away in shame, talisman of my younger years. Treasured bracelet bedecked with blue plastic elephants. I stole it from the five and 10 when I was eight years old, along with a Heath candy bar and a Clark Kent comic book, which I snuck out into the cluttered alley tucked behind Woolworths and the Roxy Theater. Hidden, I sat with my scumbled knees pulled up, crouched on top of a pile of stones, stroking my dancing elephants, reading and eating, and not going home. <laughs> Around the corner, the theater front flaunted bright posters of Dumbo, that wide-eyed little elephant whose friends would teach him that he could fly if only he believed could spread his funny ears and soar in graceful swoops above the cheering crowd, clutching the feather of faith tight in his chubby trunk. And I believed. Yes, I believed. Like you're back in the place we started. Steal a kiss from the broken hearted. You'll be on your way. Yeah. I'm 
caught up in your point of view Always sure but so confused You know I don't like being used So you'll be on your way Who can say it's a bad thing? Who can say it's a wrong thing? Who can say it's a right thing? You'll be on your way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've tried everything I know how to do. To break this spell that's come over you But your heart won't yield and your dreams refuse So you'll be on your way Who can say it's a bad thing? Who can say it's a wrong thing? Can you tell me now? Who can tell me it's a right thing? Well, you'll be on your way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lead me on, and I will follow. Won't you lead me on? And we can talk tomorrow. Please just lead me on, because I can't take this sorrow. You're on your way You're on your way yeah, yeah. You're on your way Who can say it's a bad thing? Who can say it's a wrong thing? Can you tell me now? Who can tell me it's a right thing? Or you'll be on your way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much. The obvious seemed to amaze her, but fortunately, it was not the same for my seeing eye dog. As we sat staring out the mezzanine window at the Museum Gallery of Abstract Art, I used to refer to our Thursdays as a get together, but for her, it appeared to be a rendezvous. She always bought the pocket flask of cognac, and I the thermos of lobster soup. One more short one. Tax time is kind of over, so I have one called tax deductible. The problem was not particularly ingenious, so she sat down to create a better story. She knew not speaking Portuguese wasn't going to work either, and tonight her husband would find out she had a Brazilian wax done while away at the All Women's Prayer Retreat. Thank you very much. <laughs> 40,000 years and still searching of my curious eyes Through a flood of dreams and imagination Down a river running deep and wide On the wind of an inspiration Beyond the fortress of that Stands the true light of our existence. 
much. Funny how the sun is shining everywhere I go All the clouds have silver linings And I think I finally know Where the pot of gold lies hidden at the rainbow's end Where we bring our dreams unbidden and broken wings can Dandelion flashing like a little golden sun Bursts into a globe of stars, a wish on everyone Pick it and I set myself a seed upon the wind In my heart I trust the world and let my life begin of glass, a dress of tie-dye, moccasins with fringe. I'll give you my best smile if you stop and let me in and drive me to the rainbow gathering. Open-ended, spirit-guided, traveling. I can see the doors So many magic doors are opening And I can feel there's more So much more in store for me I'm gonna run to the one that's most open wide Fly my way outside Gonna find my true friends, simple people free of care Find the true name of my soul and love none can compare Drink a thousand wine-drenched kisses, candlelit with star-filled wishes. Sing and dance a night or two away. Funny how the sun is shining everywhere I go. All the clouds have silver linings and I think I finally know Where the pot of gold lies hidden at the rainbow's end Where we bring our dreams unbidden and broken wings can mend
the divers poised, prepared to go. Reflections warping in the water far below. Drawn taller yet, she breathes in slow. And still, still, because she knows she'll jump too hard, she'll fly too far. A hesitation, she'll fall too near. Play the failing easy balance. She will pay the price of fear. Your repartee has fallen flat. How could you ever say a thing like that? Disbelief flits across her brow, and you fumble and you stumble, fear more trouble. Stop for now. Next day too, you let it pass. Still no explaining. She won't tear ass. Day by day and year to year, you both start paying the price of fear. What are you afraid of? Muffled laughter, losing love, fear of flying, fear of falling, fear you hear your mother calling, fear nobody's calling you at all. The far-off king's an evil man. Praise the gods that we don't understand. Our own king fears he'll be attacked. He's not a man if he's only striking back. Sending the boys to shock and awe. They're fighting back still. Send ten thousand more, and generations hence will pay. Price of fear we feel today. What is it you fear most, ma? Old duties or your childhood's ghost? Speak it softly, say it loud, put it in a singing bowl. And stir and listen while it turns to gold. To every soul who's ever bled, the five of swords will turn up in the spread. There's no denying a hard decision. It's fight or fly, defiance is dereliction. Round the swords of stilts, lay treasures down, dance on the hills. Better choices will appear. Catch and still the voice of fear. Better choices will appear. Catch and still. Price of fear. So, some of you who know me know we have chickens. Yes. They, they provide us with, with eggs and amusement, basically. And most springs we, most springs we uh, raise a new batch of them from chicks. This spring we decided not to do that because it seemed like 18 was enough. <laughs> But the thing about chickens is, you know, they, they start out as these tiny little, tiny cute little fuzzballs and grow up into these larger fuzzballs. But every once in a while, they'll do something that makes you wonder just what their worldview really is. I opened up the gate, I stepped into the yard. Saw a pair of yellow eyes Heard a fretful, baleful call As she marched across the grass Surveying her domain Her expression 
sent a shiver through my veins Cause there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today You might have seen it on the news Their kind had gone away But through a feat of evolution Though they changed their here to stay So there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today Well, they may be kind of flighty they may act kind of dim, but if you look into their eyes, you will see what looks within. Day now and a kiss stares out at you, the ancestry is plain. There's a secret hidden savage in that brain. Yes, there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today. You might have seen it on the news They're kinda gone away Through a feat of evolution They change but they here to stay So there are dinosaurs living In my backyard today Well, their scales have changed to feathers Their teeth into a beak and it's easy to regard them as silly bumbling freaks But there's a simple sort of dignity, a certain sense of pride That shows their spirit will not be denied There are dinosaurs living in my backyard today You might have seen it on the news They're kinda gone away through a feat of evolution, they change their here to stay. So there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today. You can watch them as they hunt. You can watch them stalk their prey. You can watch them peck your legs if you don't feed them right away. That tiny mind is dreaming of when they rule the land and hoping the day will come again. Yes, there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today. You might have seen it on the news, they're kind of gone away. Through a feat of evolution, though they change their heat to stay, so there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today. Yes, there are dinosaurs living in my backyard today. Thank you. My mom um, passed away a couple of weeks ago at the age of 92. She was also a poet, writer, playwright. And I think you, m m some of you have heard this poem. I, I read this at her funeral. I'll read it for you today. And also at her funeral I sang one verse, very short 10 second verse that, of a song I wrote about her that I never finished. Uh, I don't know if I can get through a bit, so. Mm -hmm. Mother, though we travel far and wide, You'll always be by my side. You are a true friend. What you taught me at your knee is in my heart that I can be what I want to be in the end. <sighs> On the passing of W.T. Grants. W.T. and me we go back in time. Before plazas and malls, kiosks and food courts, a WT to the tune of a live piano, playing popular hits, and a Saturday clock that ticked in halftime, where hot fudge Sundays were 15 cents, 20 with nuts. 
and wear sales ladies in pastel hairnets allowed us an afternoon to choose a ball of yarn, ribbons, or a new diary. In a corner up front, a photo booth supplemented our young lives with smiles pasted forever in family albums. I remember store managers leaning on a counter, talking to pretty sales girls, an occasional glance over their shoulder. W.T. Grants on a Saturday was a first step away from home and school, safe as a library, safer even, surrounded by a multitude of things, all comprehensible, future consumers not yet consumed with wanting, sweet days of youth and grants, seeing, touching, feeling, and taking the next bus home. With time, WT, like all of us, changed and dispersed, became all business, less personal. I returned many times to the new grants, looking for the familiar, never finding it. Goodbye, WT. Goodbye to what we used to be. Thank you very much. This is called Hippie. Xavier runs through a valley ringed by ridges in VC. Bullets whiz by like a war movie. His company is assaulting the enemy's tunnels. He has a medic bag, no weapon. A basement full of flower childs, beer bottles line the table. We letter white posters with paint. Tomorrow is the moratorium. The valley is flooded with from rice paddies overflow. A cry of medic cuts through, the, cuts through explosions. Xavier runs through smoke and riddled water to a comrade with blood spurting from a leg. Smoke from a joint curls into bare electric bulbs. A chant of ho, ho, ho chi men, the NLF is gonna win. Signs are stacked against the stone wall. We wash red paint off our hands. Xavier holds a leg above water as blood bubbles, applies a combat application tourniquet. His helmet flips off, right eye implodes, blood and shrapnel pocket his face. Eight crowd into a Mustang convertible, tickle tender body parts, hats and gloves whip around the back seat. We laugh until tears streak our cheeks. Xavier puts a compress on his dead eye, one left blurs, pulls a leg back out of water, applies a bandage on the bullet hole, shoulders his patient to the dust off LZ. Shrieking and shoving, we enter friendlies, fill up two back-to-back -back booths, order hot fudge sundaes with cherries on top, use long spoons to savor every lick. Huey flies low and fast, nurse stitches Xavier's cornea, in the airport back in the world, a boy clacks a Newton's cradle. Xavier hits the ground and rolls. Thank you. Can't find my slippers this morning. No, I can't find my slippers today. I have looked in all the usual places. Seems as if they have up and walked away I don't know where I last left my keys I don't know where those damn keys could be I don't know where I last left those damn stupid keys Where to God someone's torturing me But if I know how to jumpstart this 
brain And my days would flow along like this song I'm just a passenger on this runaway train Times have changed, guess I'll just plug along Headed off to the dentist this morning Gotta say I don't usually go this wet way Found myself on the wrong side of town Had the foresight to back up and turn around I ran into an acquaintance today But her name had simply faded away How are you? Yeah, I know my name's Sue, too. And with that, there was nothing more to say. But if I knew how to jumpstart this brain, then my days would flow along like this song. I'm just a passenger on this runaway. have changed, guess I'll just plug along. It appears my hairbrush has skipped town. It's no joke, it's nowhere to be found. How can this possibly be when I still can't find my keys? I just hope that I find it hanging round. Like with my slippers, or those keys, or that overdue library book. So grow old with grease, so they say. I can't help it, this ain't fun, so no way. And as each day unfolds, I'm reminded that I'm older, older. Have I told you why my feet are so cold? I did tell you about my slippers, yeah? <laughs> but if I knew how to jumpstart this brain, then my, then my days would flow along like this song. I'm just a passenger on this runaway have changed guess I'll just plug along but if I knew how to jumpstart this brain then my days would flow along like this song I'm just a passenger on this runaway train times have changed times have changed Dun, 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 dun. Gone. <laughs> this is a love song I wrote for my wife after a day of yard work. <laughs> <laughs> my baby knows how to handle a chainsaw. She knows how to handle me. She don't get her thrills doing lunch with the girls, and she don't do afternoon tea. My friends say I'm crazy. They think I'm a fool, but I love that girl. She loves power tools. My baby knows how to handle a chainsaw. She knows how to handle me. She drives me wild when she revs that engine, kicks up smoke and dust. Some folks say it's some kind of obsession. I know it's just lust. She wears a hard hat, goggles and gloves when she's dressed like that. I know I'm in love. My baby knows how to handle a chainsaw. She knows how to handle me. Now at the end of the day, she puts her tools away, smiles at what she's done. Then late at night, I hold her tight. We have a bit of fun. It's kind of wild. And it's mighty good and we owe it all to that pile of wood because 
My baby knows how to handle a chainsaw. She knows how to handle me. Thank you. I remember one morning when I discovered a cocoon in the back of a tree just as a butterfly was making a hole in its case and preparing to come out. I waited a while, but it was too long appearing and I was impatient. I bent over it and breathed on it to warm it. I warmed it as quickly as I could and the miracle began to happen before my eyes faster than light, faster than life. The case opened, the butterflies started slowly crawling out, and I shall never forget my horror when I saw how its wings were folded back and crumpled. The wretched butterfly tried with its whole trembling body to unfold them. Bending over it, I tried to help it with my breath, but in vain. It needed to be hatched out natu naturally, and the unfolding of the wings should be a gradual process in the sun. Now it was too late. My breath had forced the butterfly to appear all crumpled before its time. It struggled desperately and a few seconds later died in the palm of my hand. That little body, I do believe, is the greatest weight I have on my conscience. For I realize today that it is a mortal sin to violate the great laws of nature. We should not hurry. We should not be impatient, but we should confidently obey the, ex the eternal rhythm. I sat on a rock to absorb this New Year's thought. Ah, if only that little butterfly could always flutter before me to show me the way. Thank you. Listen to nature, listen to nature's rhythm, listen to nature's wondrous orchestra. Listen to morning to sitting on contentedly on grasses, waiting on glorious morning sunshine to warm their heart. Awake. Sleepy soul owner. I guess I'm so happy I was humming and that is another reason to be, you know, my gun, their stigmas. And yeah, the next one goes, listen to gentle whispering, tickling breeze on shrubs, blowing tender lime pop to hop. Listen to buzzing bees, watching along butterflies, joyously humming to chippering chorus of flying winged friend. Listen to sleigh gray crowd rolling in. Listen to heart pounding thunders pouring rain softly tapping rain bits on skylight. Listen to ever soft silvery waves of pound. Listen to roaring splashing hitting hard locks on seashore. Let white bubbly foam wash and carry worldly worries away. Listen to chants and pools of life stream. Listen to bubbling. Popping bubbles of mind, sparks of heart, listen to nature's wondrous orchestra. Wandering around the nature, actually, it helped me. Nine years, I'm still wandering around, but thank you.